For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Good evening and welcome to St. James's Church this Advent Sunday evening. Evening Sunday in Advent, I think I mean. I thought we'd start by reading Isaiah. Old Testament book that foretells what is coming, the child who will be born. I thought a good place to start. And when the child was born all those years ago, who knew what would be wrapped around it as the world moved on? Now, the first Christmas was a pretty simple affair. And you know what? It's OK if this one is too. We've created a whole industry around it and on top of and underneath the birth of a saviour. And I know to many people, Christmas is bigger than Jesus. It was stated on Radio 5 Live, only with the tongue slightly in the cheek. And many years ago, many years ago, many years ago, when I was in Young Farmers, we used to go out carol singing in the Land Rovers and end up in the pub and midnight mass in no particular order. Um, not necessarily a lot of faith either. And I always remember uh, a quote from one of my um, compatriots in singing when he said, if it wasn't for the drink, I couldn't cope with Christmas. As we wait and think of Christmas within a very different context this year, we're going to look have a think about what it is, what it means that Jesus came into the world. Now, people have a whole different bunch of reasons and feelings and attitudes towards God. For some people, it's the God who says no. For some, it's a passive aggressive God who is you're always on the wrong side of. For some, it's a cuddly bunny sort of Christmas or a My Little Pony sort of Jesus. For some, it's simply the computer error. 404, God not found. For some, it's little baby Jesus. As Will Ferrell once said in a film, I like the baby Jesus. Little baby Jesus grew up. We've all got a picture of what our God is and what our God looks like. What we're going to think about tonight and as a church in the run up to Christmas is what Jesus was actually like and the message that he brought into the world. One of my favourite Christmas songs is, I'm sorry to say, um, I Believe in Father Christmas by Greg Lake. Just quite enjoy that one. He said when he wrote the song that it was a protest against the commercialisation of Christmas, a loss of innocence and of childhood belief. And he wanted to get back to what he thought Christmas was all about. So we're going to think about the idea, the message that came from God. And we're going to listen to, sing along to, um, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And these are someone to do some drama around it. And I I say far too much. I I need somebody who can be dramatic. And I thought, do I know any who can do that? And then it occurred to me, I, I know someone who's, not only got a drama degree and actually got a master's in drama therapy and is trained to be a drama teacher, uh, is Hannah, my daughter, who is currently somewhere in Suffolk um, teaching young children drama. But she's going to lead us and read to us and help us to focus on what that message was that came into the world all those years ago, but is still here. Once upon a time, there was an idea. It was strikingly beautiful in its simplicity. It involved a young woman 
and a baby, some angels, a few shepherds, with their animals, and three wise men. It was an idea that came from the father, who looked at the state men had got themselves into and said, I will send my son to bring light into their lives. He will free them from the chains they have wrapped themselves in through their greed and their pride. He will be their king and they will be his people. Come, oh come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. In time, the child grew into a man, and the father offered his gift to the world. He went to the church and said, I have chosen you to take this joyful news to the world. And the church said, But you must have pageantry, and traditions, and a proper way of doing things. He went to the government and said, I have chosen you to lead this people according to the light of my word. And the government said, oh, but you must have taxes and bureaucrats and forms in triplicate and rules of celebration. went to the merchants and said here is the spirit in which I have given everything I have to the world but the merchants hired an advertising agency and said you must promote this for the good of the economy and the bankers raised their interest rates two percent the father went to the philosophers and said here is the way I share love go and do the same and the philosopher said it's a nice idea but it's not really practical and they gathered together the common experience of man, the results of his greed and pride, and said, the goodness of man will triumph in the end. And they went and did likewise. John, thou key of David, come And open wide thy heavenly home Make safe the way that leads on high And close the path to misery Would you stand with us and sing this chorus? Rejoice! Rejoice! But they did not realise that all they had done was kill the meaning they had created for themselves of the father's gift. While the real son had become king behind their backs, he had risen, leaving behind the lifeless grave clothes of man's ideas. But his promise is to return, to establish his true reign as king. Without your glory, we are. 
nation, let us see your kingdom come. Only you can move the mountains, only you can heal our land. Christ alone, our hope and glory, Christ alone, in you we stand. Turn your eyes and show us. This Advent, everybody is waiting. Alongside the Christian tradition of waiting expectantly to celebrate the birth of the Saviour, this year the world is waiting to be saved from COVID-19. And interestingly, both forms of waiting use the same language of light breaking through. Earlier this month, when the first signs of the vacu vaccine emerged, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Mr Van Tam, sorry, Professor Van Tam, offered an extended metaphor of light in the distance. This to me is like a train journey where you are standing in the station. It's wet, it's windy, it's horrible. And two miles down the track, two lights appear and it's the train and it's a long way off. We're at that point at the moment. Jonathan Van Tam's primary message was clear. Even if we currently remain in darker times, we can now see the first signs of hope and light to come. And since then, this week, we are talking about the vaccine arriving last week, a few days ago, Friday. Who knows what will happen? But change is coming. What we've waited for is starting to arrive. In Isaiah uh, chapter 9 verse 2, we find the prophecy of the greatest light, which will transform the lives of, lives of all those walking in darkness. And this verse rightly features prominently in Christian readings. But with as much of what we can read in Isaiah, there are many layers to this future promise. Some aspects of his words may find short-term answers for human kings and rulers, answers to our questions at some times but the full list of attributes described the full brightness of Isaiah chapter 9 is only supremely fulfilled in Jesus if this new start is described as a light dawning is a growing brightness implied here it's a great light but to begin with, there's a more subtle hue. Dawn light isn't the brightest, but it's a hopeful light, bringing with it the guarantee of more to come. Just as some energy saving light bulbs appear less bright when they're first switched on, they're bright bulbs, but they don't always show it immediately. Drive me up the wall, they do, but I do understand they're good for me. If the birth of Jesus represents the light dawning, his life, death and resurrection 
adds the brightness and the full glory. And when Jesus returns, because he will, the brightness will be unmissable and unmistakable. And all forms of darkness will have passed away, including all crying and all mourning and all viruses. In the meantime, we wait, but we don't and should not wait passively. Even today, we have seen and heard enough to trust in the promise of Advent and the King coming into the world, even in dark times, even in these dark times. And while we wait, whilst everyone is waiting, may we brighten the places where we find ourselves. May we reflect the light of Jesus in our everyday contexts, so that others might see and believe. Because the world needs more than just something to cure a virus. It needs the promise that is coming at Christmas. Now, we're going to listen to a song and join in if you wish. Casting Crowns, thank you. The family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door It was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow. A sleeping town they did not know that lying in a manger low, a savior king who had no home has come to heal our sorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? Shepherds counting sheep at night God has come to raise the lowly Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are it may set you apart When you make room in your heart And trade your dreams for His glory Make room in your heart Make room in your heart promise tight every wrong will be made right the road is straight the burdens light for in his hands he holds tomorrow is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there room your heart for God to write his story you can come as you are but it may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory make room in your heart
Let us pause and reflect on that question. Is there room in my heart for God to write his story? Heavenly Father, help us to remember that although our Christmas plans may be different this year, your purpose in Christmas remains the same. Help us to use the difference of this year to strip away all the extra trimmings and focus on what is the story that you, Lord, want to write on each of our individual hearts. Could it be for the first time that we say yes to God? Yes, Lord, I open my heart to you. Or is it that we opened our heart to the Lord several years ago, but actually have held some things back? What is that story he wants to write on each of our hearts? Remembering that God is the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Ignite in us afresh the awesome wonder of your gift to us. And as lockdown has shown us how important it is to have relationships with one another, and how difficult it has been when we haven't been able to see people, meet with people, hug people. How much more so is God saying to us, don't be distant, don't hide behind a mask, allow me to enter into your heart. So Heavenly Father, be with each one of us, over this Christmas time and may we indeed allow you to enter our heart and write your story on it. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. We'll do the prayer to finish that we've done in other weeks. The prayer for now the prayer for our world, the prayer for what will become. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be. We hoped to be. And may we stay that way. Better for each other because of the worst. In this time of Advent, may the Lord be with you. May God meet you in some way that works for you. And as we close this service tonight, I'm just going to play out with In the Bleak Midwinter, an old carol, but sung in a particularly beautiful way by Annie Lennox. Lord be with you this Advent. Have a great week and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm.